Hi guys, what's up everyone? This is Goro. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about five answers to common designated school officials questions. Every US university is certified by the student and exchange visitor program to enroll international students must appoint at least one employee to serve as a role of designated school official commonly known as DSO now this DSO officials serve as a linkage between the international student and the SCVP certified school and the US government so they are the link to all those three organization or rather it's a linkage between international student certified school and the US government they issue prospective international student necessary immigration forms help guide them through the process of studying in the United States maintain student and exchange visitor information system records and more so in that way they play a crucial role in your journey as an international student as a per per prospective international student your DSO is available to guide you and answer questions while you study in the United States so in this video I'm going to tell you some common questions DSOs receive from the international students and I'm also going to give you the answers to them of them so if you want to know which are those five common questions that are asked to DSO and what are their answers please keep on watching Question number one, do citizens from all countries coming to study in the United States at an SCVP certified school have to apply for F or M visa? The answer is most countries require prospective international students to apply for F or M visa at an US embassy or a consulate office in their home country. If you are a citizen of Canada or Bermuda, then the possibility of studying in the US, you may apply to F or M status directly at a US port entry with a passport and a form I-20 issued by the school you will attend. That's only for case of Canada and Bermuda. You, you will have a, a visa on arrival into the United States if you have the university admission. Even if you are not required to obtain a visa, you still must complete certain tasks to obtain F or M status in the United States. Those tasks include paying for I-901 service free, receiving a form I-20 certificate of eligibility for non-immigrant non student status that all can be received from DSO and attending and passing the classes to maintain your immigration status. An F and M student visa can be issued up to 120 days before the study starts. However, you will not be allowed to enter the United States in F or M status earlier than 30 days before your start date of the school. The same holds true for international students from Canada and Bermuda. So what are the giveaways from here that you cannot enter before 30 days with your I-20 into the United States and 120 days before the university gives you the I-20. And F or M visa are very important and for that you will have to pass your grades, you will have to pay your savings fee, you will have to pay the I-20 fees and everything. Question number two is, can my DSO send me a scan copy of my form I-20? Can they send you a scan copy? The answer is, given the potential for fraud, scanned or reprinted copy of your form I-20 might not permit you entry in the United States. Upon acceptance to an SCVP certified school, you will receive an original hard copy I-20 from your DSO. You must hand carry this form 
with you when you enter the United States so it's easily accessible. You will need to show it to the US Customs and Border Protection officers when you enter the United States. No scanned copy, nothing. It should be the hard copy, the original hard copy which school sent you. Question number three, what if I need to defer my program start date listed on my form I-20? What if you want to defer and you want to extend the start date? What happens then? The answer is a DSA can only defer an international student's program start date to a future school term if two criteria are met. What are those two criteria? The first is you must not have entered the US school. You cannot intend to arrive and enroll for a term currently listed on your form I-20. So if you're not here and you do not intend to arrive in the United States, that is the first criteria, then they can defer your start date. Note, if you arrive at a school after the program start date listed on your I-20 but still within the school time limit to enroll you for that session, your DSO does not need to defer the program start date. If it's already behind or if it's already away from your entry, then they won't be able to do that. Question number four is when do I need to submit transcript to a US university? School officials must receive and evaluate your transcript and other supporting documents or academic records during the application process before they can issue your Form I-20. Some schools require original transcript while others accept the copy. So you have to verify with your university how they do it and what they require. Number five, question number five is what happens if I get to the United States begin my studies and have to withdraw from the classes then do you go out of status what happens the answer to this question is in order to maintain immigration status international students must enroll in a full course of study while studying in the united states which is typically 12 credit hours for an undergraduate and nine credit hours for master student if you still maintain a full course of study in the school, you will not face immigration issues based on the withdrawal from one classes. If you withdraw from a classes results in dropping below the full course of study, you could be out of status and have to be departed from the US. So make sure you take the full courses and if you drop some courses, make sure you take the another one so that you don't go out of the status. You should immediately discuss this issue with your school's DSO as there are some instances where international students are permitted to temporarily drop below full course of study and remain in valid immigration status. So you have to be in constant touch with your DSO in order to follow the rules. And for more information on how DSOs assist international students, visit the Study in States website managed by student and exchange visitor programs and you will get all the information you want so this were the five common questions which international students ask dso and they are pretty much confused about this so the intention of making this video was just to make you aware of these five questions and what are their potential answers or solutions so i hope you um, got some information so uh, that's for that's about it for this video if you are new to this channel and if you like the content which i'm producing there are many more videos coming and there are so many videos that i made before of scholarships and everything universities and so if you like this content please subscribe to my channel and uh, that's it i'll see you in the next one thank you